Okay, uh, welcome to Six Scale. This is March 9th, 2023. Okay, um, the link to the meeting notes is in the is in chat. Uh, please add yourself as an attendee. Okay. So first things first. Um, I we we've been doing the the performance job, um, the periodic job results review for a little while now. And one of the things that um we want to change is eventually get away from having to do this and move to publishing the stuff in graphs and then sort of reviewing it in graphs instead of having to go through the job. So um, for now, just um, what I'll do. Let me just make sure that we're not seeing any failures and that we need to address and. And if there are, then okay. So overall, we're passing, which is good. So I think this is fine. And then there is the density test, which is passing the majority of the time. Okay. So I mean, the the job looks good. So we'll continue to monitor this on meetings. But I, eventually, we want to get to actually having something that looks like this, which is you can see, for example, um. Then this graph basically is looking at um, um, gathering a bunch of data about uh, different jobs in Prow and rendering it. So the idea is that we should be able to do the same thing with what we're doing um, right now with our jobs. So um, Lupo had some ideas for this. So I started a thread in Hebrew Dev with Lupo, and uh, we can follow up there. And then hopefully in a future meeting we can have a more in-depth discussion if, based on what he thinks we should do, and, and go from there. Okay, uh, performance cluster. So I asked Brian to get this information. Um, uh, we're still in discussion with him to get this. I, I think um, I, I don't know if this is done yet. Um, I don't think he has, we, we have this information and I'm still working on getting the hardware spec. So once I have this, uh, we'll uh, publish it here. And I think what we'll do is we'll eventually publish this somewhere as part of like our um, description of our, um, our performance cluster. So it's clear, like, you know, when we're looking at the results, here's, you know, we can see the hardware specs that, um, that the jobs are running against. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about KWALK. Uh, Alay, do you want to talk about, uh, introduce this topic? Yeah. Um, can I share my screen? Yeah, sure. Uh, so um, I, I just want to take um, some time today uh, to informally talk about a new project that might be very um, interesting for the scale work um, that we are doing um, in, in this call. Um, so if you look at our performance cluster, it requires a large amount of um, hardware. Um, so one of the things or one of the key ideas behind this new project, uh, Kubernetes without Kubelet is, can we uh, fake out some of the needed hardware so that we can create a, a fake um, notion of a scale in the cluster and, and then see how the control plane components um, uh, scale with respect to those fake objects. So, um, Recently, an upstream project called um, KWOK was um, introduced. Um, this project has two um, controllers right now, uh, one with that works on the fake node status and one that works on fake pod. <clears throat> uh, so here's the blog post about that. Um, some um, use, case, use cases that are mentioned here is that um, this is largely going to be used for um, testing like and learning and development. So this helps us understand the performance and scalability of control plane better. And same goes like if we extend this for the cubeboard control plane, um, this could, could be leveraged to understand the scalability of the cubeboard um, control plane. 
obviously because of the fake nature of of the objects there is there is some concern about accuracy and and uh, functionality of of these um fake objects so in order for the test to be meaningful we should not rely on the functionality but rather rely on the scale aspect um and and create the churn in the actual um uh, actual objects so with that i i want to quickly walk through how um, and introduce how this works uh, so internally as i said uh, the the entire project has two controllers those controllers can be deployed in a cluster environment or they can be deployed in in a local environment um these controllers have a uh, a notion of stage the way, the way this works is that uh, in in a stage there is a template defined these templates are um, rendered in in the controller and the rendered output is applied as the status of of the uh, controller uh, or status of the fake objects the interesting part here is that you can combine um, set of stages so here you can see that there is a next section so after this stage is applied what is the next stage that will be applied right that's what this section defines and there is some kind of um configuration parameters with respect to um time related um configuration like some amount of randomness jitter and and after how many how much time this state will the status will be applied so those are all configured by this section um and the actual object is configured by by this object so to sum up the stage um, this is not actually a crd it's something that uh, you would have to define at the start time of the controller so this is a configuration file that is supplied to the controller um, in the beginning but in the spec of this stage allows you to configure what resource to act on when to act on and what status to apply because this is defined in in a stage kind of uh, configuration you can have a set of stages that your fake objects uh, can go through um and that allows you to um create a notion of a fakeness in the cluster and still test the control plane as well as your controllers because the amount of um, status updates or randomness being generated from from this can easily help in testing uh, the control plane as well as um, uh, controller components of of a project so lay um kind of what you're showing here is that so we could take the controller from KW, okay. We can apply it to a cluster and we should we will be able to launch a bunch of objects and this is going to stress the control plane for us. And that's going to give us an approximation of of our scale. Is that is that right? Yeah. Correct. And the the two controllers that this project has by default is the pod and, and the node. So we we should be able to create fake nodes uh, to get the scale estimation. And uh, so you would you do you know if you do you, if you need is it required for you to launch fake pods on fake nodes or is it um, like what is the relationship or is it that they're independent like we just create can create fake nodes to create pressure or it's a requirement to have to use the two of them together. So the way it works is you have to um, use a label selector um, to define 
what objects these uh, controllers will act on. So you can create fake pods on, um, on real nodes, but they just have to match. Um, the problem with that is you'd somehow have to tell the kubelet on the real node to not act on it. Uh, and that would be little uh, difficult to configure in my uh, in my little experiment so far. Um, what I have observed is this KWOK controllers just work on the label selector. So they can take over objects in the um, in the real node, but not you would have to somehow, stop the kubelet or, or something to make sure that kubelet and the fake uh, controller don't um, race against each other. I so, see. So I guess maybe the simplest way to look at this is that we probably would only want to launch the fake pods on the on the fake nodes, at least yes. you know, without at, at least, least today. for now. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, so that's that's a bit of the introduction of this stage. I wanted to take a moment to go look at the default stages. That will help us in understanding. Just so. So this is the default um, stages for a node. So there are two um, stages here. One is the node initialize and the other is a node heartbeat. So the node initialize, what it does is it initializes the node status with a set of uh, default um, resources and, and other other status conditions like the IP address, um, the, the host name, kubelet endpoint, uh, and, and so on and so forth. So, so how, for example, how, yeah. Sorry, sorry. The, how does it, um, so how can, so one thing I'm understanding is like with the, the stat, KWOK has a controller and I'm seeing status here, I'm seeing some other fields. And since this is a, a fake node, but I'm understanding like this this fake node is like a real, like it's an, it, it uses the node API, right? So yes. how, how is this able to interact with status and some of the other fields that are really meant for the node controller? And like, how is it not able to, how is it, how is it able to interact with those fields and how is the node controller not fighting against it? So I think my understanding is that some of the fields in this uh, status are owned by the kubelet. Uh, the other fields are, are owned by the uh, node controller. So when, um, when you initialize the, the node, this, the status that is being applied only um, populates the field that are owned by kubelet. So, um, in a way, it fakes the kubelet. And once it has done that, the next part, uh, the node heartbeat, is uh, what, um, like, this is the part, I think, that is applied by the, the node controller. And because some agent is already applying this, uh, the node controller is, um, you know, not taking a look. But that is one question. I I have and I'm still trying to figure out like why is the node controller not fighting? But that that's my initial guess as to because there is no kubelet running on it. Node controller is not able to talk to the kubelet and it's like not uh, updating the status. So the okay. fake node node controller will come in and append the heartbeat status. I see. So yeah, I, mean, I okay. I'm gonna follow you with the the way that the, it's it's taking the kubelet side so maybe maybe um so maybe that's so that makes some sense to me like when when the kubelet the fake well the controller that's faking the kubelet stuff fills out the fields 
then it's like how so that I, i'm assuming then that the node controller must do something that would be interesting because um I mean, I, I don't see how it, it would wouldn't it probably would want to do something, and then maybe maybe the then the um the the fake controller does a bunch of stuff afterwards or something. But um, I would expect at least that the no controller does at least at least something. But that's that's fine. I mean, if yeah. it does or not, I think it just I think it just Did illustrates the full picture though to me. I think it's the key. The part that I didn't understand was like okay, cubelet. There's this controller that's faking cubelet, and it's filling out these fields so that we can progress to the next stage. So the controller can do its work. Correct. Yeah, I would take that as an open question to figure out uh, why is this not raised against the node controller? Um, it's an interesting part. Um, it will help out a lot in understanding uh, how this project can be used. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to complete uh, the thought I was running with is that, so the first stage, the initial stage applies the phase equals to running um, to, the, to the node object. Then the next stage, you can see here that in the selector section, it says um, match status dot phase. So once this fake object has gone into running state with a delay, of um, so and so mentioned in the spec, the node controller, well, the fake node controller will uh, append these um, status conditions to the um, to the fake object. So what ends up happening is you stimulate the fake um, nodes with with some statuses, and you don't need the actual hardware for it. And then you can use a similar um, similar pod YAML for um, letting your pods go to um, running state. Now, I want to take a step back and talk a little bit about how this can be leveraged um, with uh, Kubeword. So if you look at the keyword stack, when we when a user creates a VMI, the word controller sees that VMI and creates a pod for it. The pod, what we could do potentially is that the VMI can be configured with a fake, uh, with a selector that selects fake nodes and the pod created for that by the word controller will eventually land on those fake nodes. The pod can go into running state because those are actually fake pods uh, and, and not running real compute behind it. Uh, although there is an interaction between the word launcher pod and the uh, word handler, the word handler tries to talk to the word launcher pod and Move, moves forward the state of the VMIs, just like how Kubelet does. So when I tried this, what ended up happening is the VMI um, started word, well, the VMI was created, word controller created a fake pod for it. The pod went to running state, but the VMI was stuck in scheduled state because there is no word handler running on the fake node to drive it forward. So just like how there are these stages for node and um, pod, I think we would have to add an extension for VMI to move these stages forward. That is to move the VMI from scheduled to uh, running state. And once we have that functionality, we can leverage this to um, create a constant number of fake VMIs in a cluster. So that adds uh, the scale to it. And then you can create, how, well, you can extrapolate how KubeWord is performing by actually running real VMIs uh, on, on real cluster. So this reduces the need for real hardware um, by a factor of at least half, right? 
depending on the test configuration, we can scale down the actual uh, hardware for the performance test. Yeah, so th those are the topics I, I wanted to discuss. Unfortunately, I don't have a demo for it, but I can target next week's meeting to create a small demo and share with the community how this project works. It's pretty cool. So the so fit hurt handler is one thing you've identified. So this we would need a um so we'd say it we call it a fake VMI, which is really a a fake for launcher running in a fake pod. So is it like since it has no runtime, I guess what we could do is like what we were saying is they just kind of have the vert handler. Since what ends up happening is right, it's like the launcher has a bunch of signals it sends back to the handler. I guess what we just need to do is have the events. We just sort of fake the whole thing. We have um, as if the events already happened and um, and just send the information. And basically we just update the object is, is I think what we do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the other option would be like, well, this is the hard part. This is the harder one is that if you, if there was a, if you had the ability to run a real vert handler, I think this, this could be possible because technically what's happening is the launcher is communicating over gRPC. And then there's a bunch of, there's a domain socket on there for events with, um, with the guest. And so you could communicate over the socket to fake all the events being sent back to a real vert handler and it could do it as well. There's um, and there might be two approaches in terms of how we could do it. I guess it depends on the environment that we um, like. If you have, if you have, for example, if you have a node, a real node, and you have a real vert handler, you could do the fake, fake vert launcher method. If you have, if you want to go with the full fake node and fake VMI method, you could go, um, you could go that as well. Yeah, I guess the, yeah. maybe the difference would be is like one test the vert hand, one test the vert handler, the other one, or both of them test the control plane, one also test the vert handler. Correct. Yes. So I I think to elaborate the second part, right? The the one where you have real node, it tests the scaling capability of vert handler handler without um, the limited without kubelet in the picture so because we have this fake pod kubelet eh, we will first have to figure out how to not race against the kubelet and assume that kubelet doesn't uh, intervene on running that fake pod uh, and once you have that you can understand how word handler can scale independent of kubelet uh, so that's a value and then the second part is the entire thing is fake and you just test the control plane as in the API server as well as the word controller scalability. So, yeah. Okay, um, cool. one, the third approach I had in mind was that run the run the real word handler on a different node, but ask it to reconcile word launcher pods on on this of this fake node that could also be possible since word handler will not have a real pod to that could be to. possible yeah they, so you'd have to the controller you'd have to write here would have to be on the same node as the handler and then it would have to send over all the connections over the local socket so it could be so like it just be lying so like it'd be um it would be um it would just have to um well okay so there's some there it might be a little more complicated than that but you would have to um that, that would be the gist of it is like you have to sort of lie where where this where the connection is coming from right. um, 
So I guess that part that. is common with the. So that that part is common with a real word handler running, right? So regardless of a real word handler reconciling a fake pod on on the real node or a fake pod on on a fake node, we would have to um, send those signals from somewhere. Uh, so I I think it's. Yeah, you're right. Like it's it's a little bit complicated, but these are the three options we have. We'll have to go think through the stack and understand what components needed to be picked up. Yeah, that's cool. I think that, that makes sense. I think let's definitely evaluate these. I think this is um this would be cool. I'm like thinking to myself, like as you're talking about this, you know, like we have this um since this runs in a cluster, um, we could probably easily throw this into um, you know, the make cluster up and see how this how this does. Um, or even if we were to go, when we have this performance cluster, um, it would be interesting to see like, you know, if, if we can sort of extend ourselves a little bit past the physical hardware and see how, what approximations we find and since that cluster is a little larger. So that's yeah. cool. That sounds like it would be, that would be really cool to see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the easiest part would be to assume the fake node and the fake pod combination and just write to the VMI objects from a controller. That might be something we can realize um, sooner than the other parts. Sure. So, yeah, we can try that. Cool. Okay. Yeah, that sounds cool. Okay. Yeah, that's all I had. Thanks. Thanks for the time. Sure. Thanks, Lai. Okay. Um, let me share again. Okay, cool. Yeah, thanks a lot, Lai. And uh, I took some notes here. And so next time we'll we'll see if um if we get a chance to uh, the demo we can make for uh, you can show us whatever you got uh for next time. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, all right. I don't have any more topics. So uh, is there anything else? Um, we still got more time. Is there anything else people want to bring up and discuss? Hey, Ryan. Um, mm -hmm. I was a little bit interested in getting an overview of that CI health and um, the the graph that was um, that is constructed on, on the, the main page. Mm -hmm. I wonder if do the graph data is coming from uh, churning the like? Is it coming from processing the the pro job UI or? I don't know. I don't understand how this works. It's like so. I mean, we can look at. I mean, I think. Let's see, so this is a link to a Grafana board. What is this? Re, uh, we test to words. So I guess this is coming from Grafana. CI health output results that being sent. Let's see where this one's coming from. Oh. So yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of things. I I don't know, merch, I don't know where this is coming from, I guess. Yeah, um, the reason why I was curious is that it would be good for, like, as you said, for our scale jobs, it would be good to dump some kind of data in the, um, in the graph format. So we have this historical collection over time. And I was curious, like, if we can follow the same method to do this, um, so that, that's why I was looking at where to go poke. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I, I was hoping to hear a little bit more from Lubo because um, him and Daniel had a discussion and um, they had an idea because there's some automation here like that's happening. Like, like how does this get here? I, I have no idea. Like there's a Qbert bot that does this. I don't know where the Qbert bot is wired up so that it is able to pull this data. Um, because I, I thought there was a way to pull this from Prow, and I thought that's what was going to be going on here. 
and that's what I was hoping is like because we already have like like in our jobs like right at the at the ends of each job we have like basically a format like this it's just it's not in JSON but we could easily make it JSON and export it as an object and then and then we basically have everything we need and and you know, we just need to put it to a graph so I mean we we pretty much have the hard part down and we just need to figure out how to wire this up so. Yeah, I don't know. I'm hoping to hear a little bit more from Lubo and Daniel on so we can get get started on this. I said I would definitely love to see this. I mean, this is this is great because I mean, thinking about it, like you know, we have a good visualization over time. Like this is something that when we look at our CI jobs, we we don't really have that. We can like just you know look at what we can only look at a few at a time. So it's hard to see you know over this is over two years, three years or so. So it'd be nice to have the same kind of format. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I'll follow that. Right. Yeah, there's it's on it's on keyboard dev and uh, I can tag you as well. Okay. okay. All right. Um, are there any more topics? Any more things people want to bring up? Mm, sounds like no. Okay. All right. Well, um, <clears throat> just a reminder, please add yourself as an attendee since I, we've had some people talk like add yourself as an attendee just because it's important to see the attendance for this meeting. Okay, thank you everyone. Bye bye.